Hi everyone. Good morning. This is Dr. Neha Khodke. Welcome to Zomio Classroom. The session that we are going to take today is of a medicine or a homeopathic remedy which is not often thought of in many clinical conditions where it is actually applicable not just as a specific medicine but even as a constitutional a remedy that was proved by hanuman himself i am talking about paris quadrifolia paris quadrifolia is a remedy from the homeopathic materia medica which is widely known for its use in catarrh neuralgia and nerve related troubles originally proved by hanuman tap and others we have many important symptoms that make it an excellent and important remedy now looking at the remedy information it belongs to the natural order of liliaceae and is a plant that has an isolated bud with four leaves it is also called as one berry and the homeopathic medicine is prepared using the tincture of the whole plant when it is in fruit let's have a look at what this plant looks like and you can do that from homepad zomio itself all you need to do is go into the module of remedy now before that i hope that you all have started the software in your laptop or your desktop so that you can follow the steps exactly as i am telling you and you know where each feature of zomio is located and how it can be accessed so back to the software go to the module of remedy and click on remedy list alternatively you can also press command e from your keyboard once we enter the remedy list section on the left hand side you see the entire list of remedies that are present now if i am looking specifically for the properties of a certain remedy like paris i just have to type in this search box the name of the medicine so i type in p a r the moment i type in p a r i can see that the remedy list from more than 3000 remedies has drilled down to 89 and the first remedy in the list is the one that we are looking for that is paris quadrifolia on the right hand side you can see the properties of this remedy now we are interested in looking at the remedy image so if i want to see the remedy picture you have to click on the arrow present next to the word properties and click on the last option which is remedy picture and this is what paris quadrifolia looks like what you can see is a single fruit that is surrounded by leaves now usually it is surrounded by four leaves but it can be anywhere between 2 to 6 leaves remember this picture because this is going to play a very important role when we try to understand the constitution and the mind of paris moving ahead this plant is seen in temperate and cool areas across europe the plant grows in calcareous soil especially around old woods and stream banks it flowers during the month of june and july now if you notice i have written the word doctrine against a point so here in lies one of the doctrines of signature of paris now we saw that it usually grows around damp woods and stream banks so it is usually moist but not very moist it is not wet 
it is just damp and that is why a paris person has a lot of coldness in his body there's a lack of vital heat that you can correlate with the habitat of this plant as an example let me show you how this is represented in our repertory to do that all you have to do is type command s from the keyboard the command s command opens the search repertory pop up now in this you can type any rubric that you are looking for and the software will search from all the repertories that we have so we are looking for coldness but we are not just looking for coldness we are looking for a basic lack of animal heat in the body so we will type lack of vital heat and we press enter and we have 187 results now if you just click on the first result which is from the generalities chapter of the complete repertory the rubric reading coldness lack of vital heat when we click on this we see that there are more than 750 remedies under this rubric if i want to see whether the medicine paris quadrifolia is there then in the search bar all i need to type is p a r and now can you see paris quadrifolia is a four mark remedy for lack of vital heat and this you can take as an important doctrine of signature for the habitat that it resides in now if you look at the material characteristics i believe that if you need to understand a medicine why it um expresses the way it does the physiological action and the actual material substance of the uh, source of the remedy plays a very huge role in making us understand why it manifests the way it does in its homeopathic preparation now as far as a material characteristic is concerned paris quadrifolia is actually a poisonous plant though it does have some therapeutic application in mild and controlled doses it has a very putrid smell the entire plant smells offensive and therein lies the next doctrine of signature of paris quadrifolia if you see the discharges the diarrhea of paris quadrifolia is extremely offensive to the point of being putrid plus because it's a very strong smelling plant you will see that a paris quadrifolia person is extremely sensitive to odors and sometimes even has a delusion that there is a bad smell around and this you can remember using this doctrine of signature so friends the next time you have a patient who is very sensitive to odors or even the slightest odor of any kind you can you need not just think of the usual uh, remedies that we think of like arsenic or colchicum but we can also think of paris quadrifolia because it is a poisonous plant the effect of paris quadrifolia goes towards the narcotic path so there is a lot of drowsiness there is a lot of numbing of the senses and this numbness is seen physically as well so there is a lot of numbness in the fingers there is a lot of numbness in the head any narcotic um, remedy or a narcotic uh, drug rather takes you on a different plane and the paris uh, symptoms also manifest that like for example the sensation of being enlarged the sensation of being superior this is a narcotic effect and the same symptoms of the head being enlarged of the eyes being enlarged of all the parts being enlarged and heavy 
is seen in Paris quadrifolia also. Now, when we look at the symptoms of the poisoning of Paris, they start with nausea and retching, followed by colic, diarrhea, painful cramps and a difficulty in breathing. And this nausea, the retching, the diarrhea, the cramps, all of these are seen in the physical manifestations of the homeopathic Paris quadrifolia also. Now, here are in the broader spectrum, the PQRS symptoms of Paris. This is what Paris quadrifolia is generally known for by everybody in homeopathic practice. So, we all know that it is a left-sided remedy. It is known for its nerve affections. So, it directly goes and affects the nerves. So, there is a lot of irritability. The sensitivity is uh, markedly increased. And even the pains of Paris quadrifolia are neuralgic in nature. So, apart from the fact that there is irritation in the nerves, there can also be the opposite sensation of benumbing of the nerves. So, we see a lot of heaviness, numbness, tingling, parts feel enlarged or drawn together. So, there is a sense of tightness also. All of these are nervous manifestations and they are seen in Paris. Friends, it is very important to understand the sphere of action of a remedy before we go on to reading or understanding what the symptoms are. There is a feeling of coldness in the right side of the body and they feel that the left side was hot. Now all of these PQRS symptoms, whatever we have mentioned here, are available in most of the Materia Medica books of Paris Quadrifolia. But let me show you a particular Materia Medica book that has all of these symptoms written in capital. And these are the symptoms that we can never afford to forget when we are talking about Paris. So let's have a look at what Borex Materia Medica mentions about Paris Quadrifolia. To read about the Materia Medica of Paris Quadrifolia from Borex, what you need to do is first go in the remedy list again. So now I close this window. If you can see there is a new feature that is added in HomePad Zomio of different windows. You can open multiple windows and access them whenever you want. Okay. So now we would like to go back to the remedy list. We had already opened the remedy list a few minutes back. All we need to do is go back to it. So I click on the tab of remedy. I see that Paris Quadrifolia is open. Now I would like to read the Materia Medica of Paris from Boric. So I will click on the arrow present next to remedy picture and click on reference book. Now, if I want to read Paris Quadrifolia from a particular Materia Medica, like Boric, I will click on the arrow next to the word books and I will open, I will scroll down in the list and I will open Materia Medica by Boric. And here is where we can see what Boric has written about Paris Quadrifolia. Right now, let us just have a look at the symptoms that he has mentioned in capital because they are the most important symptoms that were seen in the proving of Paris Quadrifolia. Let me just increase the font size first. To increase the font size, this is the font line here and I just need to drag the pointer towards the right. To increase the font size. Okay, so let me just quickly go through the um, symptoms that are mentioned in capital. So under the mind section, there is one word called garrulous. We will be tackling this word later in the session. In the head, now these are the symptoms 
that we can never afford to forget in Paris. So, head aches as from pulling a string from the eyes to the occiput. A similar sensation is mentioned in the eyes. Sensation of a string through the eyeballs. If we move down further, we see that the tongue is dry, especially when waking up. And there is no thirst. So, a dry tongue without thirst is there in Paris quadrifolia. It is also there in another remedy and that is Nux Moscata. However, in Nux Moscata, there is a very specific sensation as if there is cotton wool in the mouth. So, a slight numbing sensation is there in the mouth along with the dryness and the thirstlessness. So, these are the symptoms and yes, under respiratory, there is periodic painless coarseness under extremities and this is a very important symptom a sense of weight or weariness in the nape of the neck fingers often feel numb so these are the bold symptoms that are mentioned by boric for paris quadrifolia these are the symptoms that we must remember when we are looking to physically treat any complaints. Now moving back, what exactly is Paris? Now like I said, we need to remember the picture of the remedy to understand what is Paris. So let me go back to the picture again. I click on the arrow and I just click on remedy picture. This is what Paris looks like. So there is a single bud or fruit that is surrounded by leaves and this gives you a sense of what Paris is. A single flower surrounded by four leaves. If you translate this as a doctrine of signature, there is a feeling of loneliness in Paris. But this is a very specific kind of loneliness. Now let's see if this has reached our rubrics and let's see if Paris qualifies in the rubric of loneliness. So if I want to go to the rubric of loneliness, I just do a command S and in this I type, alright, I have typed L-O-N-E and I have five um, suggestions I will click on the second which is loneliness and enter and now I see that there are 12 rubrics for loneliness let me see the first one which is from the mind chapter of the complete repertory again to see whether Paris is there I can scroll down and I can look for the word Paris but since there are more than 600 remedies it is easy for me to just type the word. So yes, if I type P-A-R, I can see that Paris figures in loneliness. Now this figures in the complete repertory. Suppose I go on to say the loneliness in Allen. If I click on the loneliness given in Allen, there are only six remedies and Paris is not there. Now why is that so? Why? Is it there in one repertory and not in another? This is because Paris Quadrifolia's loneliness is of a very peculiar and specific kind. So there is an undercurrent of loneliness without actual loneliness. Now let me explain to you how. There is a loneliness even among people. And this loneliness is a very specific kind of loneliness because it stems from the fact that there is no one in the company that you are in who is of the same age, of the same culture as you or somebody who is on the same wavelength as you. Think of a child. Think of a child in a room full of adults. So, and the adults are paying attention to the child. So, ideally speaking, the child is not lonely 
there are people around him who love him who are paying attention to him who are spoiling him probably but the child is still lonely because there is no one of the same age of the child so this can be the situation of a child who has nobody to play with who is completely alone it can be the situation of a child who does not have a friend or a child who doesn't have a sibling so the only child or a child who does have a sibling but the age difference between the two is very large so there is actually nothing that the two can uh, interact about this is a child this is a paris child who feels lonely even when there is company now they have families relatives who speak to them who are with them but there is no one of their age or matching their wavelength to share their thoughts and feelings to play with them to interact with them at their own level they receive a lot of love sometimes too much love so as an only child an only child is going to be pampered a lot a child who uh, you know between him or her and their sibling there is a lot of age gap this kind of a child is going to be pampered a lot is going to be given a lot of attention but there is no one to be with them during play time so there is an internal feeling of being under confident there is an internal feeling of inferiority but they also want the attention and they compensate they don't show that there is no confidence they don't show that they are feeling inferior they show the exact opposite they show that they are extremely confident to the point of being overconfident they are extremely social and they compensate by being very egoistic and they praise themselves a lot because they want that attention that is why they are extremely egoistic to the point of being haughty and they have to rely on a lot of foolish behavior just to attract attention there's a lack of seriousness in their behavior so can you understand what this person may be he seems like an immature person because this is a person who has not been exposed or who has been exposed very little to people of his own age group and that is why he doesn't know how to behave now when he is around adults how does he uh, try and get their attention he tries and gets their attention by saying something absolutely weird or something absolutely funny to the point of being foolish that is how he will get their attention now let us see how all of this comes together in the repertory for paris now the first word that i said was egoistic this is a person who is actually feeling very inferior who is actually feeling very out of place but does not want to show it does not want to express it appropriately by actually going to an adult maybe a parent or an elder sibling and saying that you know i'm feeling odd no they compensate by being egoistic and haughty and this is what we will see in the repertory also so let us try another way this time not command s so we will do a command o when you do a command o the actual repertory opens on the left hand side of which there is a list of repertories and under every repertory there is a list of chapters if i want to look for paris in the rubric of egoistic or egotism okay now i will just start typing e g o t and the first reference that i get is for egotism now in this if you see paris is there in one mark so paris is an egoistic remedy as well when we generally look at the remedies in a rubric we generally tend to skip over the remedies 
that are present in one mark. We look for the remedies that are there in four marks. So platina or three marks like sulfur or veratrum or lachesis or lycopodium as in this case. But we rarely look at those remedies that are there in one mark. But we need to remember that we cannot be prejudiced against these remedies that are there in one mark because they have also been seen in provings. So if you can see Paris is an egoistic remedy. It is a haughty remedy. They tend to praise themselves a lot. But at the same time, they are extremely foolish. And that foolishness is seen in the way they speak and it is seen in the way they behave. Now let us see how Paris is represented in foolish, foolishness or foolish behavior. For this, there is a very interesting feature called remedy extract. Now to access remedy extract, you click on the module of remedy and select the second option remedy extract. Basically, this remedy extract is for you to understand a remedy through its rubrics. Many times, like for example, in the case of Paris itself, Materia Medica books are painfully limited as far as the manifestations are concerned or uh, documenting the symptoms of Paris are concerned with respect especially to the mind. And in this, the remedy extract feature plays a very important role. It is a sort of a life-saving feature because it helps us to understand a remedy through the rubrics. That's how we can form a picture of a remedy. So let's see how we can do that. Now for a remedy extract or to extract the rubrics of the remedy Paris. In the add remedy section, I type in the word P-A-R and I select the first option which is Paris. I add it. Now I am trying to understand the mind of Paris. So, under repertories and chapters, I will be selecting the mind chapter. So, I click on mind from the complete repertory. I can select multiple chapters. So, that means that I can select the mind chapter of other repertories as well. But as of now, I will be selecting only the mind chapter from the complete repertory. I click on done. And now I am specifically looking for the word foolish because I want to understand the level of foolishness in Paris because it is going to help me understand how Paris is actually as a remedy. So in the symptom keyword, I type foolish. In the extract options, I select all rubrics. So I'd like to see all the rubrics that have to do with the word foolish for Paris Quadrifolia. I click on extract. And now if you see that there are five references for the word foolish with Paris. Now see the level of foolishness in different aspects. A Paris Quadrifolia is cheerful and foolish. There is foolish behavior. In Paris. The foolishness is so much that even the laughing is silly and foolish. He laughs in a very foolish way. The hilarity or liveliness is also a foolish type, maybe out of proportion to what is actually required. And last, there are a lot of foolish talks, and this is what is important when we come to the locacity of Paris. So can you understand the picture? It's a very vivacious remedy, just like phosphorus. It's a very loquacious remedy, again like phosphorus, but it is a very foolish remedy. And this gives you a picture of a certain level of childishness or immaturity in the Paris person, which brings me to what I'd like to look for next, which is childish. So if I want to see the, uh, whether Paris is there in childishness, 
okay uh, this time let me look at uh, an old repertory a pioneer repertory uh, like kent or bbcr so if i want to see the rubrics of childishness i do a command s from my keyboard and i type childish i press enter now i see that there are 93 results now let me see the results from kent and boninghausen or bbcr so i click on kent and i see that there are a lot of references 11 12 references for uh, childishness in kent i click on the second reference which is childish behavior and can you see Paris is there? It features in one mark in Kent's repertory for childish behavior. Again, a reminder that you need to look beyond the grades many times. Okay, like in childish behavior, we will generally think of Baraita Cub as being an immature remedy. But even Paris Quadrifolia figures here. Let's look at another reference. Let's look at the reference from Boninghausen. Okay. The rubric here is childish simple with 19 remedies. And Boninghausen has given Paris in grade 2 as a childish remedy. Again, Baraita Kaab is a stronger remedy as far as childishness is concerned. But we need to remember remedies like Paris, Ignatia, Pulsatilla and Stromonium also. Now another symptom that we saw was a lack of seriousness in their behavior. Again reflecting their childishness, again reflecting their immaturity. So it is the immaturity that is you know percolating through the entire behavior. So you see foolishness, so you see a lack of seriousness in behavior, you see childishness, you see a childish egotism, okay? Now, this lack of seriousness in behavior, if you translate this as a rubric, then that rubric becomes frivolous, okay? So, let's look for the rubric frivolous. Again, we do my favorite command, command S, and we type F-R-I-V-O-L-O-U-S. Okay, so we see frivolous over there and there are a lot of references, 21 references for frivolous. I go to the reference of say Kent. Now why I am showing you the reference of Kent is because Kent has just 5 remedies. Okay, if we go to frivolous incomplete, there are 25 remedies. But let's go to Kent an extremely conservative homeopath okay who has included just five remedies in the rubric of frivolous i click on it all of them are in one mark and paris is one of them so can you understand how important this remedy is this remedy has been proved by hanuman has been given so much importance by kent and boninghausen and yet we are not that familiar with this remedy. When we talk about frivolous behavior, we usually think of murk. If we think of childish behavior, we usually think of baraita kab. For egotism, our thoughts automatically veer towards a lycopodium or a lachesis or a sulfur or a platina. But we never think of the remedy Paris. Moving on, there is a certain type of characteristic in its loquacity. Paris is an extremely loquacious remedy. They talk a lot. And loquacity, if you know, has a lot of remedies in it. Okay, So we have lachesis, we have phosphorus, we have veratrumal, we have strumonium. Okay? Uh, but what sets the loquacity of Paris apart from all of the other remedies that I've mentioned. So now when we come to the loquacity of uh, Paris, it's a very immature kind of loquacity. They talk a lot. 
but it is a garrulous kind of loquacity the word is garrulous now garrulous means that you know what you're listening to a garrulous person is an annoying person and the loquacity of paris is such that when you listen to paris talk and talk and talk you can get irritated you can get annoyed by what they are talking because usually they do not talk sense their loquacity is very illogical it is very immature it's very childish and that is how you can distinguish the loquacity of paris from the loquacity of other remedies they keep on prattling they talk and talk for the sake of talking not because they need to it is a foolish loquacity so let's see how loquacity looks like in paris to do that let's go back to our remedy extract the remedy extract is already open in a tab so we just go back to it we see that paris is the selected remedy mind chapter from the complete repertory is already selected now all i need to do is change this word instead of foolish i put the word locacity so i enter locacity and click on extract and now if you see there are seven rubrics for which there are references to the locacity of paris quadrifolia let's have a look at them so firstly it features in the general rubric of locacity where if i just click on this rubric i can see all the remedies that feature under locacity so there are 279 remedies for locacity including remedies like cannabis indica cannabis sativa simisifuga dalka mara hyoscyamus and the usual remedies that we expect like lachesis moschus phosphorus stramonium veratrum all right now in this itself paris quadrifolia is represented with grade 3 okay so we know that it is an extremely talkative remedy but what is the specific characteristic of the locacity of paris for that let's have a look at this rubric locacity changing quickly from one subject to another they can jump from one topic to another in no time they do not need a connection a similar kind of locacity is also seen in lachesis so i am now going to tell you how you can differentiate the locacity of paris from the locacity of other remedies for that just look at the rubric below this one so it is actually a sub rubric of locacity changing quickly from one subject to another talking merely for the sake of and if you see there is only one remedy under it and that is paris quadrifolia so when a person talks just for the sake of continuing a talking just for the sake of generating that type of an attention that they crave then you think of paris quadrifolia as a constitutional for them another important rubric that i would like to take your attention to is this last one locacity unimportant matters about again if i click on that there are 10 remedies out of which paris occupies grade 3 the other remedies that come under this uh, rubric that are very prominent are hyoscyamus and stramonium as well as in one mark if you see belladonna and simisifuga there is lachesis as well but the intensity of this uh, symptom in a lachesis proving is very less okay so unimportant matters about is exactly what i was telling you about garrulous loquacity okay that is why i'd like to show you something very interesting if i do a command s and i type garrulous 
I see that there are only two references out of which BBCR has six remedies. Complete is not showing any remedies for locacity garrulous. However, it does have a cross reference. Now, first, let us look at the rubric of locacity garrulous from BBCR. And you can see that the remedy Paris features under garrulous locacity that is given in the BBCR repertory. Coming to the second one which has no remedies at all which is locacity garrulous from the complete repertory. Let's have a look at the cross reference. So if you would like to have a look at the cross reference just click on this bulb and you can see the cross reference which is locacity unimportant matters about. This is exactly what we saw in the remedy extract for Paris. So again, if I click on this rubric, I go back to the full uh, symptom, which is Paris, Stromonium and Hyosimus featuring high in locacity, unimportant matters about. And this is the characteristic of the talkativeness of this medicine. They just keep talking for the sake of talking. So whether the matter is important or not, they keep talking. Okay, now, like I said, how can we differentiate the locacity of Paris from the locacity of any other remedy? Okay, so for example, let's just look at the general rubric of locacity. All right, so um, let's do a command S and type locacity. Okay. We see now in Kent, there are 96 remedies, in Allen, 51, in BBCR, 43. Let's have a look at the reference of BBCR, okay? So now there are 43 remedies in BBCR. How do we differentiate between the locacity of Paris and the locacity of other major remedies? For example, Let's take the first remedy that we generally think of when it comes to a talkative person, which is Lachesis. Just like Lachesis, Paris has the tendency of jumping from one topic to another. So they can change the subject very fast and they can still continue talking seamlessly. But the locacity of Lachesis is an intelligent locacity. They speak about relevant things. They speak about things that people like to listen about or like to listen to. That is the difference between the locacity of Lachesis. They talk sense, even if they talk a lot. And this is the difference between the locacity of Lachesis and Paris. Let us take up uh, another remedy. Like, let us take up the remedy Stromonium or Veratrum. Okay. How does the locacity differentiate from Paris? Now, stromonium usually becomes locacious when there is a fever. And the same can be seen in belladonna as well. When it comes to veratrum, their locaciousness is more for topics that are related to religion or spirituality. That is where their expertise lies, they think. And so that is why they speak a lot about religion they speak a lot about spirituality. That is where they actually become locacious. Whereas Paris is generally locacious. And the locacity is a foolish type of locacity. Now, let us look at another rubric of locacity. Let us look at Kent. Okay. Now, if you see the locacity of rubric locacity under Kent, there are many other remedies. Okay, there is um, Ambra, there is Simisifuga, there is uh, Naxwamika. Okay, um, now how do you differentiate between the now even Naxwamika can actually be a very very locacious remedy, but Naxwamika is usually locacious about their own health, they are very anxious about their own health, and that is why they tend to talk a lot about their own health. So the 
locationness of nux is very very specific again if we come to a remedy like simisifuga the locality of simisifuga again is very specific so it is usually seen around the time of menses and especially if the periods do not come on time that premenstrual irritation that is there leads to a lot of talkativeness in a simisifuga person plus even though a simisifuga uh, person may have a bit of a prattling type of locality or a foolish type of locality that paris manifests simisifuga usually talks about or is very talkative about family they are very talkative about their home whereas paris is usually foolishly talkative about themselves this is the this is how you can differentiate between the locality of different remedies when it comes to ambra grisia the locality of ambra grisia is such that their conversation or their speeches usually hold a lot of questions without waiting for an answer they just go on to the next question that is there in ambra grisia of course you cannot use these symptoms just as you know alone or stand alone when it comes to prescribing a constitutional but they help to give us a path towards how we can differentiate the locality that is seen in different remedies now another uh, symptom that you see in paris is they can be very good flatterers they flatter very nicely because they they need something from the person so if they see that there is some profit then they will praise the opposite person to the point of being flatterers and there's a very interesting rubric for this uh for this type of a uh, flattery or this type of a locality and that is sweet talkers so if i do a command s and i just type sweet talker okay there is just one rubric in the entire uh, collection of repertories that is there and that is there in the complete repertory as praise sweet talkers there are nine remedies in this and if we see those remedies there is lachesis there is palladium there is sulfur phosphorus and paris so these are the type of remedies who try to flatter people if they need something or if there is some profit and paris is one of them and this is why it is so important to have different repertories at your disposal because a certain specific rubric that you may be looking for may not be there in the repertory that you usually rely on to get a remedy which is why it is so important to have different types of repertories uh, with you so that you can draw on the strength of every repertory that you have and you can prescribe the perfect remedy for your patient so even among the egotism even among the locality the haughtiness there is an underlying sense of being alone and inferior and that is why they are very very sensitive to any contemptuous language any one that makes them feel inferior or worthless or any one scorning or mocking them and they get aggravated so that is why there is a very important rubric that is there in paris let's have a look at that let's do a command s and type the word con we have 13 references for the word scon let's have a look at the first one con ailments from aggravates so if you click on the rubric con ailments from aggravates there are 32 remedies and if you see paris quadrifolia has grade 3 or features in grade 3 in this rubric so this is an inferior person a person who is internally lonely but does not show it a person who is underconfident 
but compensates by being egoistic by speaking a lot about themselves by generally behaving in a very foolish and childish way but there is that undercurrent of inferiority and you see this when you see that this person when he is scorned or when he is mocked or when he is made to feel worthless he feels very bad and that is when all his health problems start and that is why this rubric scorn ailments from aggravates is very important a very important causation in paris quadrifolia now let us see how paris quadrifolia themselves react that is why when they compensate now an ailments from scorn is ideally showing that you are lacking somewhere but a paris does not like showing that there is an inadequacy or there is an inferiority so they compensate how do they compensate by becoming contemptuous themselves so they can mock the opposite person in a very sarcastic manner because this is exactly what hurts them if it happens to them so they feel that if this hurts me this will definitely hurt another person and that is why they tend to mock that person they are fearful of this and so they become what they fear so if you see the rubrics of contemptuous or mocking you will see that paris features in them let us see let's do a command s again and in this we put in the word contemptuous and now if you look at the rubric contemptuous from the mind chapter of complete repertory there are 112 rubrics and paris is present in grade 3 look to the left of paris you also see palladium there so palladium is also a contemptuous remedy platina is also a contemptuous remedy china is also a contemptuous remedy how do you differentiate between the contemptuousness here now palladium by itself if you see is somebody who has genuine talent and who wants to flaunt it this is what she flaunts to get attention a platina need not have talent because internally she is so sure that she is great that she doesn't need to or she doesn't feel the need to prove anything to anyone when we look at china there is a fixity in the ideas and there is a feeling that they are being tormented and because they are feeling that they are being tormented they respond in a contemptuous way they respond with contempt whereas when it comes to paris they respond with contempt because they feel inferior and they do not want to show it so this is how you differentiate between the different personalities of remedies moving on to the next rubric that i'd like to show you which is mocking so again i do a command s and i type mocking okay when you mock somebody you make fun of them you make them feel inferior okay now if you see mocking has 75 remedies clicking on the rubric we see again paris quadrifolia features very prominently as a grade 3 remedy now if you have a look at the rubric that is right below mocking that is mocking sarcasm 56 remedies paris quadrifolia again as a grade 3 remedy so the type of mocking of paris is very specific they mock in a very sarcastic manner the opposite person comes to know that they are mocking them why because they are very immature they are very childish and this is a childish expression of their feelings or emotions on the other hand because they are childish because they are immature they are very easily influenced okay so they are people who will praise other people 
to get what they want but in turn if someone praises them or if someone says something to them they believe it very easily and that is why they are very impressionable people again let's see if we have the rubric impressionable with us doing a command s i put in the word impressionable okay so we have a rubric called impressionable susceptible in the mind chapter of the complete repertory if i click on it and i search for the remedy paris so i type p a r i see that paris is there in grade 3 so are you able to understand the evolution of this remedy a remedy a person who is an only child or who has a sibling but there is a very huge age gap between them say more than 10 years 12 years a child who is present among people who do not belong to his age who do not belong to his thought process or his wavelength becomes like this who has not seen the experiences of people of the same age how will this child become this child will have a certain sense of loneliness will have a certain sense of inferiority and uh, under confidence but they will never show it in front of adults why because adults are not like that according to him adults are extremely confident they know what they are talking about so to compete with them he also becomes like that he becomes egoistic he praises himself because they want that attention they crave that attention from adults but at the same time we remember that they are very childish as an adult also an adult paris quadrifolia is going to be very childish especially uh, something that is shown in the way they speak because they go on prattling even about unimportant subjects even when it is not necessary just for the sake of talking they are talking it is not an intelligent talk like a lachesis or a nakswamika it is an unintelligent uh, a type of a garrulous loquacity about unimportant matters about trifles that is seen in paris at the same time because they are very inferior they feel very inferior they are very sensitive to any person scorning them or mocking them or making them feel inferior and to compensate for that they become contemptuous themselves they start mocking themselves okay so this is the evolution of paris now if you try to understand the combination of locacity egotism ailments from scorn all of this is also seen in the remedy sulfur okay so paris and sulfur run parallel to each other paris and lycopodium also run quite similar to each other because there is that egotism in spite of a sense of being uh, inferior there is an aggravation from scorn but the difference between lycopodium sulfur and paris is that lycopodium and sulfur have a more of a sensitivity towards criticism whereas paris has a sensitivity towards being scorned okay criticism can be positive criticism also but even a lycopodium or a sulfur will not take criticism positively even if it is a positive type of a constructive criticism whereas when it comes to paris it is more of uh, being scorned being made to feel worthless okay paris talks a lot about dreams they they talk a lot about immature things that they would like to do whereas a sulfur sulfur also theorizes but sulfur's theories are a little logical also when it comes to uh, somebody who is 
arguing these people are very argumentative paris is a very argumentative remedy but along with paris there are other remedies also which are like that like tarantula like nitric acid merk salt sulfur again okay how do you differentiate between the argumentativeness of these remedies and paris is that the arguments that you will be presented by a sulfur or a lachesis or a nitric acid or a merk salt will have some logic in them whereas the quarrels or the arguments that paris will present are very illogical they are very immature just like baraita cup so this is how you can differentiate paris from a similar remedy like sulfur from a similar remedy like lycopodium from a similar remedy like lachesis all right now let's move on to the physical symptoms or the physical manifestations of paris generally there is a sense of heaviness in paris okay so there is a heaviness in the head there is a heaviness in the eyes in the mouth the tongue feels very heavy in the stomach there is a feeling of heaviness like a stone and it is better by eructations and yes remember the one symptom that is very very prominent in this pain as if eyes are pulled back with a string the same sensation is present in the eyes okay so generally in paris you will see a lot of heaviness you will see a lot of tightness and enlargement next there is a sense of numbness everywhere so the numbness is found in the fingers also the numbness is there in the feet the numbness is there in the head so there is a lot of numbness and there is a lot of um perversion of touch so in paris a paris person will say that even if i touch something soft or smooth i will feel that it is rough everything feels rough is there in paris quadrifolia let's have a look at another uh, materia medica book that features the symptoms of paris so we go back to the tab of remedy click on the arrow click on reference book and now in the books let's see concise materia medica of homeopathic remedies by fatak so again if you have a look at the generalities fatak also mentions that there is a sensation of heaviness numbness parts feel too big or drawn together disorder of the sense of touch objects feel rough so these are the prominent symptoms of paris quadrifolia that you will see across all materia medica books even in the mind garrulous loquacity silly conduct inclination to treat others with rudeness and contempt so now in the materia medica books if you see there are very certain specific words that are mentioned but now we can understand the evolution behind all of the symptoms that we see the remedy has a marked action upon the respiratory tract leading to symptoms like sensation of dryness in trachea and cough with expectoration in the morning a painless hoarseness which is periodical now again when you think of painless hoarseness we think of a lot of remedies but we never think of paris we think of calcarea we think of phosphorus but do we ever think of this remedy let's see how prominently paris features in cases of hoarseness again for that we go back to the remedy extract so we go to the window of remedy extract the remedy that is selected is paris but the chapter that we need to select is not mind so we remove this chapter and we select the chapter of speech and voice from the complete repertory and in the symptom keyword 
we type hoarseness. All right. There are 11 rubrics for hoarseness in which Paris Quadrifolia features. So the general rubric hoarseness, hoarseness in the morning, hoarseness in the morning waking on. Do you remember? We had read this in Borix Materia Medica. Periodic hoarseness. Again, it is present as a three mark remedy. And if you click on that rubric, there are only five remedies for periodic hoarseness. Calcarea, Magmure, Nicolim, Nuxwamica and Paris Quadrifolia. Hoarseness with dryness of air passages. So we saw that there is a dryness in the mouth. There is a dryness at the level of the tongue. There is also a dryness at the level of the throat. And look here, painless hoarseness. Again, only 17 remedies. And among that, Paris Quadrifolia features in grade 3. Apart from that, we have other remedies that we can usually expect like Calcarea Carb, Causticum, Phosphorus, Calcarea silicata, but you must also remember that Paris quadrifolia is also there. Then we have cough with expectoration in the morning and without expectoration in the evening. Very, very prominent symptom of Paris. The expectoration is slimy, viscid, greenish, with difficulty in raising it in the morning. So if you see, the throat symptoms are very, very prominent in Paris. It has characteristic sensations. Sensation of enlargement of parts. Again, if you correlate with the doctrine, it, is, it has narcotic effects and any narcotic drug has this sensation of being large, of being superior, of being taller than everyone, of all the parts getting enlarged and enhanced. And this is there in Paris. Sensation of parts being pulled by a string. Objects seem rough to touch. Again, like I said, there is a perversion in the sense of touch. Now, let's compare this remedy to a few other remedies. We see the prominent uh, features of Paris. Like we see the headache of Paris. Okay, so how will you differentiate it? between you know differentiated from the headache of other remedies now the other remedies that you usually think of which are one-sided because paris is a left-sided headache remedy okay apart from the actual sensation of being pulled by a string silicia if you see silicia has a similar kind of pain to paris but silicia is a right-sided remedy and the pain goes from the occiput to the forehead. In Paris, the pain is usually uh, located in the occipital region and there is a lot of heaviness and tightness in the head usually seen on the left side. Another prominent left-sided headache remedy that we will think of is pygelia. But pygelia symptoms are exactly like silica but they are just on the left side. So the pain from the occiput travels to the forehead and eyes on the left side. And it is a neuralgic type of a pain in spigelia. Okay. Whereas in Paris, it is more of a heavy sensation. Another remedy that we will think of for uh, headache is menianthus. But again, the headache of menianthus is very specific. Silica and pygelia go from downward above, whereas menianthus will go from above downward. It has the same uh, feeling of pressure that Paris has in the eyeballs, that the eyeballs are being pushed or pulled. But this is the main difference. The headache is a pressing type of a pain that goes from above downward. Now, eye symptoms, okay? In Paris quadrifolia, I mentioned that there is a sensation as if the eyes are being pulled backward with a string. You can see the similar sensation even in croton tape. So how do you differentiate between the two remedies? Okay, now this differentiation interestingly is given by Kent in the remedy croton tape. 
let's have a look at it so if i would like to see the remedy croton tig and i would like to read it from kent's materia medica i will go back to remedy list and in this i will put croton okay i will select croton tiglium click on the arrow go to reference book and in books i will select lectures on homeopathy by kent okay now let me quickly move on to the symptoms of the eye okay all right i'm just increasing the font okay read this with this inflammatory condition there is a sensation very commonly present in the croton tig eye cases as if the eye were drawn backwards by a string or as if the optic nerves were dragging the eyes backward into the head this drawing in the back of the eyes as with a string is also peculiar to paris quadrifolia but the conditions are different okay in headaches from overuse of the eyes with much neuralgia in the head probably because of the overuse of eyes when the pains are not attended with inflammation but they are mostly neuralgic in nature you think of paris but when there is inflammation when there is a redness a raw redness of the eye where the blood vessels are very prominent where the conjunctiva are inflamed where there is a lot of sensation of heat that is the time that you think of croton tig so croton tig is a remedy that you will think more in inflammatory conditions of the eye where there are vesicles and pustules whereas paris is the remedy that you will think where there is more of a neuralgic type of pain that arises from eye strain or overuse of eyes okay that peculiar sensation of the eyes being pulled back by a string is there in both these remedies but you can differentiate based on the pathology now with relation to the hoarseness and the expectoration so paris is a very prominent laryngeal remedy apart from paris mostly when we think of laryngeal remedies we think of argentum metallicum we think of argentum nitricum how do you differentiate now in um paris the expectoration is slimy and it is greenish in case of argentum metallicum it's going to be whitish or grayish and in argentum nitricum it is going to be yellowish so it is a mucopurulent discharge argentum metallicum and nitricum usually get hoarseness because of overuse of the voice okay whereas in paris there is no overuse of the voice it is just a dryness in the uh, throat and the larynx that brings on this hoarseness okay manganum if you see manganum hoarseness is mostly seen in individuals who are very thin who are anemic in nature they are the ones who constantly fall sick and the throat gets affected most of the times and the last comparison we do is with carbo anomalous now these are in frank cases of infection in the chest or in the bronchi okay both paris as well as carbo anomalous have lot of cough with green expectoration and a cold peculiar cold sensation in the chest but what differentiates carbo anomalous from paris is carbo anomalous is a right sided remedy so the pathology is seen in the right side and paris is a left sided remedy the pathology is seen in the left this is how you can differentiate between paris and other remedies as far as the physicals are concerned when we talk about locacity i had already spoken about the different types of locacity seen in lacases uh, simisifuga nux vomica ambra and paris 
I hope that you have enjoyed this session. You have understood a remedy that uh, you know is not generally prescribed as a constitutional, very rarely prescribed even in physical ailments. I hope that now you will be able to incorporate Paris Quadrifolia in your prescriptions for your patients whenever it is relevant and whenever it is required. So thank you and take care. See you next week.